justice delayed could become justice denied because every day that dissipates, every moment that dissipates, witness memories fade, physical evidence dissipates. Shankwiller Robinson's lawyer has traveled to Mexico to seek answers concerning the case and the Cabo Six are terrified. Sue Ann traveled to Cabo earlier this year for a fact-finding mission. In a letter to the White House, Sue Ann described the experience as surreal. It was a surreal experience in the sense that I've been an attorney for almost 17 years. I'm a former prosecutor, criminal defense attorney, Sue Ann said before adding, I have never had to physically go to another country to investigate on behalf of any family. So it was unreal in that regard because the lengths that this family has had to go through while trying to grieve a loved one but also seek justice on behalf of the loved one at the same time. It's a very heavy burden. I always say that I'm amazed at how they put their shoulder to the plow to really push this forward. The lawyer traveled to Mexico to check in on the status of the case and advocate for the Robinson family and she had the following to say. From going there, from going to the place, from going to the villa. It is so ironically just such a beautiful, peaceful, tranquil place. Driving there, I was overwhelmed with the emotion. Just thinking of how excited she must have been how she was looking forward to hanging out with people and just enjoying the place. Then knowing she didn't get to enjoy it less than 24 hours is just extremely sad. Sue Ann shared that the investigation into Shankwella's death has been completed in Mexico and that an extradition packet was handed to the U.S. government. Sue Ann Robinson, the family's attorney, traveled to Mexico herself for answers. One of the witnesses, one of the personnel then was brought in and they watched the video and identified the person attacking and beating Shanquilla Robinson. And that person was named as the aggressor by the Mexican authorities. In addition to this, Sue Ann shared that the Mexican government has filed for an arrest warrant for the perpetrators of the hideous act. On the other hand, the U.S. government is yet to do anything concerning this case. In fact, Shanquilla's family continues to plead with U.S. officials for action in the case, which has been deemed femicide. Meanwhile, Robinson's lawyers informed the public during a news conference at Livingstone College in Salisbury that they have already scheduled a meeting with White House officials. Expect that we're going to have, uh, whether virtually or in person, a meeting with the White House. Apparently, the purpose of this meeting is essentially to find out where the United States administration is in the extradition protocol. The protocol dictates that the State Department has to have communication with Mexico authorities in order to either initiate an extradition process, which would generate a federal case in the United States. Mexican authorities now are looking and with regard to the arrest warrant for the extradition, that is to have the party or parties brought back to Mexico to be held accountable. The extradition process has been slow, but Shankwell's legal team is not backing down anytime soon. She was a strong, brilliant black woman, the best that we had to offer the world. And that's why we're going to continue to fight for justice for Shaquilla Robinson. What's more, Sue Robinson said that if there is no action taken by the U.S. within 200 days, they plan to apply even more pressure and hold a bigger demonstration at the Capitol. As this is going on, other allegations have come up, claiming that the time of death indicated on the autopsy and the time that the viral video was recorded are not adding up. According to the concierge who was called in as a witness, the violent act happened at around 7 to 8.30 in the morning, but Shaquilla lost her life at 3 p.m. So, Shankwell's family are demanding to know what happened between the time of the violent attack and the time of her demise. We are all familiar with the Cabo Six who are Shankwell's six travel mates who accompanied her to her death site and returned unscathed. Initially, the cause of demise was disclosed to her mother as a case of alcohol poisoning, which was later nullified as soon as the autopsy report came out. In the report, it was clearly mentioned that the death was caused by asphyxia or severe injury to the neck. Additionally, spinal injuries were also reported. The autopsy was performed a day after her demise and revealed that Shankwella had succumbed from a metallurgy and atlas dislocation, severe spinal cord injuries, blunt force trauma to her head, and several other contusions in her pelvic region. Additionally, she had friction rubs all over her body. A few months after she passed away, a video started making the rounds on social media, and it's pretty disturbing. In the video, Shankwella can be seen getting brutally beaten by her so-called friends. It's a tough watch, but it's clear that Shankwella was subjected to some serious violence while she was vacationing in Mexico, likely just a day or two before her murder. It's a terrifying glimpse into the toxic relationship she had with the people around her. If your own friends can treat you like that, who's to say they wouldn't go even further? This video was probably the final nail in the coffin for the Cabo Six, as they're now under suspicion for murder. A heartbroken fan responded to the video saying, This story is devastating. Tears are welling up in my eyes. Your child leaves for vacation, is brutally beaten to death, and others watch and film. How could you? I would want them all to experience what my daughter did. Do they even have a conscience? 
just downright violence and ignorance. We, as a black community, are already victims of racism, but we violently beat and kill our own. I am broken. While some have shown sympathy towards the mother-daughter duo, others are demanding that the government and justice system penalize the alleged perpetrators severely. It was expected that this case would trigger strong reactions from the public. However, many are questioning why the authorities have not yet arrested the main suspects despite a clear list being compiled. At the top of the suspect list is DJ Jackson, who has been identified as the girl in the video showing Shankwella being abused. As a result, she has become the prime suspect in Shankwella's murder case. There are rumors circulating that an arrest warrant has been issued for Dijani and that the Mexican authorities have ordered her extradition from the U.S. to Mexico. A lawyer by the name Dimitri has also expressed his desire to hand the suspects over to the Mexican authorities for them to face their state laws. They will engage in their own due process to see this person that is alleged to have committed a crime should be extradited. Meanwhile, the family's reaction at this untimely demise was of utter disbelief and sorrow. Shankwella's father, heartbroken beyond belief, talked about her travel mates and their indecent behavior. He called them out on not only bullying her but also silently watching the scenes unfold when they could have alternatively helped avoid this tragic situation altogether. The man, bro, she took, she suffered. And they sit there and watch. Bernard Robinson further expressed, This hurts. This hurts to the core. She was my only child. She had so much going for herself. It is undoubtedly devastating to receive news about one's child being murdered in cold blood, especially when they are as young, successful, lively, and bubbly as Shankwella. One of Shankwella's classmates described her as a popular cheerleader with a good fashion sense. Shankwella was running an online boutique and children's hair braiding business while completing her studies at Winston-Salem State University before her untimely death. Unfortunately, the world lost a bright young woman with a promising future. However, the case has progressed quickly thanks to the legal team's discovery of a secret witness. The concierge at the vacation house where Shankwella was murdered has come forward and claimed that another woman from the group is the murderer. He revealed that he first met Shankwella at a dinner party and noticed she didn't seem to fit in with the others. He received a text the next day from someone on the trip stating that their friend had alcohol poisoning and needed emergency service. Shortly after, he received a call informing him of Shankwella's death. The concierge alleges that he was manipulated and that the murderer is another woman from the group. He added, When I saw the video on social media, I realized that practically Dijani had manipulated me with the information she provided of what happened, to leave the country as soon as possible. The fact that the people responsible may walk free without consequences has outraged people to the point where they have organized rallies to show solidarity with Shankwella's family and put pressure on the U.S. government. Overall, the question that lingers in the minds of many people is whether justice will be served for Shankwella or if this case will drag on with endless legal battles. It's a frustrating reality that many victims of violent crimes face with the uncertainty of whether their perpetrator will be held accountable. The hope is that the legal system will act swiftly and justly to bring closure to Shankwella's family and friends and to set a precedent that such heinous acts will not be tolerated. The public outcry and pressure on the government and authorities may help to push for a resolution in the case, but ultimately, it is up to the justice system to ensure that justice is served. That's it for today, folks. Bye!